you know, when, when, when you buy a married put, you spend most of your money on the shares of stock and a little bit on the time value of the put. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that is equivalent to the same strike call over here, but only if you take the rest of your capital and you deposit it. And that's a lot of capital, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. All right. So uh, here's the deal, okay? If you deposit the amount of money it would take to buy the stock and buy one call contract, that would force an optimum position size, okay? And if you have the discipline to put the lion's share of your capital into an interest-bearing account, why then that would be the way to go, okay? Mm -hmm. But not everybody does that. Not everybody remembers to do that. By trading a married put, first of all, we'll go back just a little bit. First of all, <clears throat> the interest that the Black-Scholes equation assumes that you have, uh, that you are going to earn because you have made a deposit in an interest-bearing right. account, that amount is priced into the long put. Isn't mm -hmm. that something? When you buy the stock and you buy the put, now, Mike, let me just ask you a question. When, when would you rather have your interest, a year from today or today? No, well, we'd rather have it today, of course, Kurt, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> and that's the edge. That's the edge that I promised everybody that's at this presentation today, okay? You're going to, by buying a, your stock and a put instead of buying long calls, all right, first of all, you're going to force yourself not to trade too many contracts, but secondly, you're going to have uh, this slight pricing edge, and 50 cents makes a difference. Maybe it's not a huge difference, but it does make a difference. It's a slight edge to begin with, and you won't trade too many contracts either, and that's really the, the core of uh, rate active trading. You know what? Let me just ask, okay? What single thing does everybody out there think that they need to be more successful at trading? What single thing? Okay, we don't have a lot of votes in yet, but all of them are limit my losses more so far. Okay, we've got a couple other answers going on. Let me leave this up for another 10 seconds. I figure that folks are, are learning how to use that, that poll tool, and, and they'll be able to get their answers in quickly. Okay. Mike, here we go. Let me just share those results. Do you see those up there? Yes, sir, I do. Wow. I think people know what you're trying to say, Kurt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to limit our losses more. And you know what? If we limit our losses more, the wins are going to take care of themselves. Okay? Um, we're, we're going to go back to our regular presentation, but uh, I'd like to mention something. You know, if you lose 50% of your account, Mike, <clears throat> lose 50% of your account, what do you need to make on your next trade to be back up to even? Uh, if I lose 50% in my account, Kurt, I'm going to need a 100% gain on what I have left just to get back to break even. Okay. Now, let's go more modest, okay? If you had a 5% loss, mm -hmm. well, if a 50% loss means that you need to have 100% gain, you need to double your money, all right, why then, what does a 5% loss mean? Well, if I apply math magics and just divide by 10, that would mean I would need a 10% gain just to get back to break even. But that's not how things work, is it, Kurt? Yeah, that's not really how it works. You only need a 5.26% gain. You see, Mike, if you keep your losses low enough when you do lose, then you don't need as big a win mm -hmm. to get ahead. And that's one of the most important lessons of radioactive trading. Okay, Mike, I'm going to go back to, to, to this one here, uh, this presentation, and uh, I'd like to open it up to a couple of questions because I know a lot of folks came on wanting to know about the mathematical edge. Do we have any questions about that before we move on? And then uh, what we're going to do is, is get into some of the income methods, for example, of, of radioactive trading, okay? Mm. Oh, i got to hide that. <laughs> <laughs> got to remember that. Do we have any questions coming in? Well, we had a question, a couple of questions from Barry regarding the blueprint. I answered those. Um, John right now is having some issues with his sound. I'm working on that, but I haven't seen any other questions come in yet, Kurt. Okay, and uh, and we're pretty solid with our attendee list. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. that tells me that that we're keeping everyone's interest. Um, I'm going to ask Whoops. this question here. Did we have something come up? A yeah. Question? 
Okay. What? Oh, I'm I, um, I'm sorry. I just got a question. I think it's from uh, Imran. Is what are trade-offs for put plus call at the same strike? I think he's referring to a long straddle. Um, hmm. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what he's asking there. Yeah. Okay. Maybe submit that question uh, to support radioactive trading, um, and, and we'll uh, we'll get back to you. Oh wait. Uh, what we're talking okay, about hold on. today is Mary puts. Yeah, Imran uh, said yes, and uh, Imran, I, I'll look up your email later, and I'll show you some examples we have where past uh, radioactive customers have asked about using a long call instead of the stock with a protective put, and it just never works out right. And I'll send you some examples of that. Um, Mark just came in and wanted to know what is the profit potential for the married put strategy. Well, it's technically unlimited, isn't it, Kurt? It is uh, uh, unlimited. Let, let me. Uh Let's uh, let's talk about that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, do you see the covered call screen there? Mm -hmm. Now we've done polls before where we've asked folks, okay, look, uh, who's who's making the three to five percent per month that they were promised, and uh, uh, we haven't had any takers yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've had a whole lot of folks say, well, you know, I've heard of others doing it, but I've never done it, and uh, and, and all these folks seem to go to the same three thousand uh, dollar weekend seminar, okay? So. Um, Here's here's why I'm going to say that that's happening, okay? Because covered call selling, there's nothing wrong with it except for what's wrong with it. What's wrong with it is uh, if if you buy stock and hedge it with a call option, mm -hmm. Mike, that's that's mixing strategies, right? Yeah, we're taking a bullish strategy and adding a bearish strategy, aren't we? Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that except for what's wrong with it. What's wrong with this one is that if the stock goes down, we're still holding the stock, right? Mm-hmm. Some yeah. folks that are listening are familiar with this mm -hmm. this uh, heartache. Okay, you, you you own the stock and you sell the call, and uh, and then the stock goes down. But what's the other heartache? You tell me. Well, it's a sorting machine, isn't it, Kurt? When we're trading consistently with covered calls positions in various markets, what we find out over time is that the losers end up staying with us for significant losses, and the winners get called away from us from a modest gain. If the stock went up 10 or 15%, we don't take advantage of that, do we, Kurt? We get called out for the 3 or 4% gain. That's right. Uh, I'm going to put up an example here in just a few minutes uh, where we, we had somebody come on and they said, man, I made 7.9% in a month with a covered call trade, and you're telling me a married put would have done better? Hmm. And I wrote her back. I said, well, yeah. You're going to tell me the date that you bought it, and I'll apply the same uh, – I'll, I'll apply what's in the blueprint to it, and, and, and we'll just see. Okay, so I'll, I'll deliver on that here in just a minute. But let's first let's just look at this hockey stick graph. Only we're going to turn it upside down, mm -hmm. which to me is actually right side up. <laughs> All right, Mike. Uh, here we've limited our losses. Right, we have a, a, a the theoretical unlimited gain as that stock wants to continue up. Mm -hmm. uh, we can continue making money. Um, talk about what's different between. The radioactive profit machine, that's, that's my brand, okay? It's my way of describing my kind of married put setup. Uh, let's talk about the difference between what we're looking at and, and a traditional married put. Well, we discussed this a little bit earlier, but any of you out there who've read an introduction to options investment book, or maybe you've read some uh, information or education at your broker, you've probably read that a married put or a protective put is defined as buying stock and at the same time buying a put option that's below the current stock price that's out of the money and maybe only one month out in time. So you're only paying 80 cents or 50 cents for the put. But the problem is, is that since your put is below the stock price, you may have a drop of 10 or 15 percent before the insurance policy kicks in. You have a 15 percent gain, or I'm sorry, 15 percent loss. You might need as much as a 22 percent gain or so to get back to break even. That's, that's very hard to swallow. What you've done here, Kurt, is you've reversed both concepts of that general position, haven't you? Right. You see, we, we entered this, I think, in February or March of last year, where uh, we, we bought the shares of SY and also a put option that was five, six months out in time. Okay. So when you buy the, the put option out in time, it gives you a longer uh, time for that position to mature. Another thing, too, is that most of this 590, that looks expensive, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But